So today we're going to talk a little bit about contrast and value. We're also going to talk about neutral colors for our Martina Mart um, Mar Maria Martinez inspired artwork. And what was really unique about her artwork, as you saw in the um, N M P B S Colores video, was that she did pottery that had one type of black on another type of black. So something shiny on something matte. Um, and there wasn't actually a lot of contrast, which made it unique and kind of interesting and different from other Native American pottery. So contrast usually is when we have high contrast, um, two things are very different. So it could be black and white, or it could be opposite colors like red and green. But usually when there's high contrast, things stand out against each other really brightly. When you have low contrast, that is when things kind of more match together. So low contrast would be something where the colors are similar, um, they don't stand out as much. So when we're thinking about her, when we're thinking about contrast, we usually think the extreme light value and extreme dark value. But when we're gonna do work that kind of reminds us of hers, we're gonna be thinking of values that are close to each other. Uh, something that's closer to black and then a really, really dark gray. And the way we're gonna accomplish that is using different kinds of drawing materials. Um, our backgrounds are gonna end up being neutral colors. We'll talk about that a little um, after we do our pottery um, drawings, but just remember neutrals for our colors. Okay, so the first thing you need is a piece of paper and you need it to be horizontal. Uh, it's okay if you do it vertical, I'm just doing it horizontal for composition. And we're going to draw some vessels or some pieces of pottery. They are 3D, they're form, so we're going to try to draw them that way. Um, if yours don't look exactly like mine, that is okay. Um, but let's try to make them large so they can fill the page and that we can have some overlapping so that way it also shows that they are in real space. So at the top left, we're going to draw the opening of one of our vessels, one of our pieces of pottery, by drawing an oval. After you do that, we're going to make a pot that kind of goes in, out, and then down. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to right under my oval, let's do another curved line for the bottom. And then I'm going to try to make a mirror image on both sides for this pottery. So I'm going to go down like a little neck, go out, and then go in. And once again, if yours isn't shaped exactly like mine, that is okay because, well, if you were making real pottery, they would all look a little different. And pottery can be definitely many different shapes. Okay, so there's one pot. Um, the next one is going to be a lower kind of bowl. So right here, I'm going to do an oval right next to this one. Notice how I left some room over here. And then I'm going to make my slightly curved line on the bottom and make a really wide bowl. I might actually touches. Okay. And then I have room for one more. If you don't, that's okay. But I'm gonna do one that's tall and kind of standing behind. So I'm gonna do another oval. And then for this one, it's going to be behind my bowl. I'm gonna go in and then really far out. And really far out and down. All right. So a lot of her artwork, as we learned, um, the designs reflected nature around her, the things that were in her everyday life. In a way that kind of documented um, her surroundings. And so I want you to think about things that are natural that you can make designs based off of. So you're not gonna be like drawing a mountain or a river, but think about different kinds of lines that would um, look like a mountain or a river. So for this one, I'm going to do kind of a, for me, a um, water-based one. I'm gonna first do like a little ring around the neck of my pottery. And notice how I'm curving it because if this was a real piece of pottery, um, the design would curve around with it. It wouldn't be a straight line. So then this one I'm going to do 
kind of like a wavy preform kind of line. And I'm making shapes. So this one is one band of a shape and this one I'm gonna have to do a bottom line because this section is going to be a different kind of black. So as you draw shapes and patterns, you wanna think about how you can make it so that way you can color in the different areas a different color. So now I have two areas that are end, gonna end up being my different kind of areas. Uh, this one I think I want it to be mountain-like. So I'm gonna do some zigzag lines. And then, don't want the same. No, I'm gonna do this one a little bit different. Hmm. And then maybe I'll add a few triangles to the bottom here. All right. And this one, I feel feeling some trees. So I think for branches, you know what, I think I'm just gonna do a tree on it. So I'm gonna do kind of a tree-like design on it. Once again, making a shape or a closed area because that's gonna be colored in a different way than the rest of my artwork. I'm gonna do one branch going behind here. All right. And then maybe up here I'll do So we have three things that we need to color in. We have the inside areas of our designs. We have the main piece of the pottery that is um, kind of like the negative space, so the background space. And then we have the inside of our pots itself. So I want you to actually, if you have it, try to do this in three different kinds of media. Remember media is drawing materials and you want your media to be black. So um, a pencil, graphite, is gonna end up being shiny, kind of like in the, her artwork, she had a shiny part. So I would, if you have a pencil, you should use a pencil. Um, Sharpies are great too. Those will end up more flat. Uh, crayons are great too. I'm probably gonna use crayon because um, it spreads really easily, which is kind of nice for my bigger areas. You can use paint if you want to, um, that will work as well. So my three media are going to be pencil, Sharpie, and crayon. And our goal is to create low contrast. So that's why we're using things that are all um, going to end up being black or really dark gray, because we want our values to be very similar. So for this, you can start coloring it in after about halfway through coloring it, this would be our halfway point where you would pause um, and then either finish it next week or if you wanna finish it later, you can. Um, but let's do, I'm gonna speed it up and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna use my pencil to do my insides of my designs. Um, and then I'm gonna to start to show you how the other ones will have a little bit of contrast, but still have a different kind of quality to them. So as you're coloring in with your pencil, I would suggest I would suggest the pencil for this because this will be the smallest um, area on the front of your art piece. Also, you can see that I put a piece of paper under my drawing hand so that way I don't smudge it as much. It will take some time, so just take your time. Try to make it kind of dark and shiny. Take breaks, stretch your hand. It will start to hurt a little bit. Um, and then this would be a great stopping point. As you can see, the quality or the property of the pencil makes the design shiny. Um, in the next video, I'm going to show you how it will contrast a little bit the different kinds of mediums that we're going to use. Um, now, typically in Maria's work, the shiny part would be the bigger part of the pattern, but um, that took a really long time. <laughs> and um, we're going to flip it so that way it's a little a little bit easier to um, manage when it comes to doing pencil designs um, 
but still kind of go with their concept of having this lower contrast. And the only thing really making it stand out is kind of the quality of the medium or the material.